Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at slope fields and, and how slope fields are related to solving differential equations. Um, this is not a concept that is in our book. It's a fairly new calculus concept and what we're going to do is uh, I'll take a look at some examples here in this video with you and then your problem sets that I give you are just going to be a collection of old AP questions from me recent years. Um, what slope fields will do is it's, it deals with the separation of variables. So if I wanted to integrate this, I would have to separate the dx over here and I had to put the y1 my minus 1 down here and so on and so forth. The next two examples I will do that. The slope field is a connection to that separable differential equations where I'm going to find my constant values, I'm going to integrate, I, the problems get more complex. The majority of the point values on these AP questions come from that separation of variables and solving it. This slope field is usually the first part of the question and what this is supposed to do is help you determine what family of functions it falls into. Sometimes it will do that, sometimes it won't, sometimes it's kind of hard. Um, simply put, if we're given a derivative like dy dx equals y minus 1 over x squared, a slope field is, what it's going to do is going to take each one of these ordered pairs, so 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 points. I'm going to plug in 9 points for x and y into my derivative equation, and I'm going to find the slope of the line that would be tangent to the graph at these points. And I'm going to sketch a small line segment, which will um, show um, what the slope of the tangent line would be at that point. So for instance, the easy ones here are when y is 1, because when y is 1, no matter what x is, it's the whole derivative is going to be zero. So these tangent lines would have horizontal, or they'd be horizontal tangent lines. They have a slope of zero. So I'm going to I'm going to sketch these line segments with a slope of zero through all these points where y equals one. Notice I don't include include any on the y-axis because x cannot be zero. It'd be undefined right there. Um, if I go down here and at, at this point right here, negative one, um, negative one zero. I put in zero here. I get negative one on top. I get 1 on the bottom, so it's going to have a slope of approximately negative 1. If I put 1 in there, um, if I put 1, 0 in there, I get the slope of negative 1, so they should be kind of parallel. They're not going to argue with you about whether this line segment is parallel to this line segment, but they should be close. And if I put 2 in here, I get a, a slope of negative 1 fourth, so it kind of flattens out like this, and negative 1 fourth. If I go up here to uh, negative 1, positive 2, I'm going to get positive 1 on top um, and a positive 1 on the bottom. So I get a, a slope of positive 1. Uh, this one is going to be the same thing. Again, sketch it so it kind of looks the same. And if I put in a, um, a 2, 1, in, or excuse me, 2, 2 in here, I get 1 over 4, which is 1 fourth. What this is supposed to do is this, this is, that's called a slope field, and that's supposed to give you an idea of um, what family of functions this falls into. Um, I would argue that in this particular case, you wouldn't really be able to tell, but nonetheless, that's what it's supposed to do. Um, the second parts of these problems would then give you information about the original equation. You separate your variables, you integrate, you find the constant values, so on and so forth. And in my next couple of examples, I'll go ahead and do that, but this is just the slope field piece of it. On my second example, what I have is this. This is AP question you can see from 2000, uh, 2005. The derivative given to you is negative 2x over y. Uh, for my slope fields, I'm going to go ahead and, and plug them in here. Um, if if um, I plug in this point right here, which is at negative 1, positive 1, um, I'm going to get positive 2 as a slope. If I plug in um, negative 1, positive 2, um, I'm going to get um, 1 as a slope. Over on this side, um, this is how I have a slope of negative 1 and, excuse me, negative 2 and negative 1. This one has a slope of negative 1, negative 1, and it's going to be something like that. That should be maybe a little steeper. Let me give you that one. That's supposed to have a, uh, where am I? There we go. That should have a slope of 2, a negative 2, sorry. And then this one should have a slope of negative 1, positive 1, and positive 2. So that's my slope field. Um, now you know, that part of it, just plug it in. Um, in this particular case, in the second problem, they ask you, or the second part in part B, they ask you about um, this, uh, the differential equation if I have f of 1 equals negative 1. 
what they want me to do is write the equation of line tangent to the graph um, at that point. Um, at that point, if I plug in one negative one into my derivative, then the slope is going to be negative two times one over negative one, which we found over here uh, is this point right here is uh, is going to maybe not that point. How about that point right there? Um, is going to give me a slope of 2. So the equation of line tangent to the graph is y plus 1 equals 2 times x minus 1. And then the second part of that asks you to approximate um, f of 1.1. Remember from our first semester, you just plug in 1.1 right there. It really doesn't have to do with what we're doing currently, but just so you can see the scope of the problems. So you get y to be about negative 0.8. And then this last piece is the separation of variables, the f of 1 equals negative 1. We're going to keep with that. And if I take this and I separate my variables similar to what we've done in previous sections, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to end up, um, let's just write down dy dx equals negative 2x over y. Bring the y over, bring the dx over. So I'm going to write it as y dy equals negative 2x dx. Integrate both sides. On this side, I'm going to get y squared over 2 equals negative x squared plus c. Um, if I plug in my point now, if I plug in negative 1 here, I get 1 half on the left side, and that equals negative 1 plus c. So my c value is 3 halves. So the solution to my differential equation then is going to be y squared, <coughs> um, sorry, algebraically, it's y squared over 2 equals negative x squared plus 3 halves. And one of the things you have to do is you have to see that they want you to solve it for y right here, y equals f of x. So I need to solve this equation for y, so multiply through by 2. And so when I multiply through by 2, I'm going to get y squared equals negative 2x squared plus 3. And then i got to take the square root. Um, and so when I take the square root, I'm going to get y equals the square root of negative 2x squared plus 3. When I take the square root, it could be positive or negative. And because the y value here is negative, I'm going to take that negative square root. So technically, that little negative has got to be there as well. So slope field, and then really the two pieces that we're currently working on, slope field and then solving the differential equation. Let's do one more example, one more quick example. It uh, won't take as long. Uh, plug in these points, and I get the slopes. My, my um, derivative this time is going to be 1 plus y over x. If I plug in negative 1, 1, I'm going to get 2 over negative 1, which is going to be negative 2. Um, these values at y equals 0 is going to be 1 over negative 1, so a little bit less. And then these ones are going to have slopes of 0. Again, I don't have any on the y-axis. Oh, I have one over here at negative 2, 0. So that's negative 1 half. That shouldn't be parallel to that. It kind of looks that way. This one should be positive 1. That should be positive 1 half. And that should be, what, 2 over 1, which is 2, so a little bit steeper, something like that. And that's what my slope field looks like. In this case, I want to, again, I want to solve the differential equation, and I have uh, my given solution is uh, negative 1, 1. Again, negative 1, 1. That points on the original graph. I have to separate my variables, so I'm going to get, uh, in this particular case, I get dy over 1 plus y equals 1 over x dx, or dx over x. When I integrate both sides, uh, they involve ln, so I get the ln absolute value of 1 plus y equals the ln of the absolute value of x plus uh, a constant value. Um, if you rewrite this as an exponential, um, it's going to be, on this side, it's going to be the absolute value of 1 plus y. Careful on those absolute values is going to be 
e to the ln of x plus my constant, which is really, remember, e to the ln of x um, times e to the c. Sometimes you'll see books write this as just a constant like k, because that's just a number. This is the absolute value of x. So um, if I were, to, you know, if I were to rewrite it, I'd have something like one plus y equals c times the absolute value of x. And if I plug in my given information here, negative one one, um, I'm going to get c equals c equals two. Um, so I end up with this equation one plus y equals 2 times the absolute value of x. And um, I, I moved that 1 over. And so, you know, I had to solve it for y. So I get y equals uh, 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1. And this is for all values. And they ask you about the domain of this function. This is for all x values when x is less than 0. So my domain on this is when x is less than 0. So again, some extension questions, some separation of variables, so finding a constant value, algebraically working it out, um, try to clarify for you some of these little bit trickier ones in class and that kind of stuff. But the idea behind this is sketching the slope fields. These should be very easy. These are, these are not hard. Separate the variables, take the correct antiderivative, plug in your initial given information, and find your constants. Uh, good luck. I'll give you the worksheets to be working on in class.